In this video, we're going to explore the NetBeans debugger. A lot of times, textbooks and classes will save the debugger until the end of the class. But I can assure you, if you learn it early, it will save you many, many hours. So the sooner we can get to it, the better. I'm going to use a program that we created in a series of previous videos, and this program is available on GitHub. I'm going to go through, you see it says four commits now. I'm going to refresh, and it says seven commits because I have pushed the latest videos, whoops, I've pushed the source code from the latest videos out there. So if you want to try what I'm trying, you're more than welcome to clone this repository and follow along exactly with what I'm doing. First of all, what is a debugger? A debugger allows us to see our program work in a time and pace that's convenient for us. When we have run the program in the past, it has run at the computer's time. But we want to slow it down so that we can actually watch what's happening. So to start the debugger, I need to tell the program where I want the computer to stop making decisions and where I want to start making decisions. So I'm going to go ahead and snap a breakpoint on line 20. We'll do 20. In NetBeans, I just click one time and you see that it kind of goes in what I call a Pepto-Bismol pink color. Now we can set multiple breakpoints if we want, so I'll set another one on 30. Now what this means is run the program until you see this Pepto-Bismol pink, then stop and wait for the user, which is me, to tell us to execute the instruction and go to the next line. To debug the program, I simply choose a debug project and take a look at the other options that come up here. We have step over, which is F8, step into, which is F7, and continue, which is F5. Step over or F8 means execute this line and move to the next. Step into means we're on a method call and we want to step into that method, where step over would simply execute the method and move on. Continue F5 means, okay, we're all finished debugging. Uh, keep going, yeah, let the, let the computer take over from here. So I'm going to say debug project. And what we'll see is the Pepto-Bismol line turns green. That says the computer is right here waiting for us to tell it to move forward with this instruction. So I'll simply choose F8, and you'll see that the green line now goes down to line 23. Remember our discussion on methods, what is line 23? Line 23 is a method call. This is where I have the option to use F7, which is step into. So if I press F7, look at where the green line goes. It goes to the first line in the prompt user method, and now again I can choose F8, which means execute this line. I can choose F8 here again, which means, okay, create the variable my vehicle. Now that's interesting. Look at my vehicle. If I click on this variables tab over here, I can see my vehicle, and here's the neat part. I can take a look at its state. In other words, I can see the value of its variables. So I'm going to go ahead and choose F8, and that prints the current state. Now we're going to say enter gallons of gas. One little trick with the NetBeans debugger, it has, a, it has a focus issue with J Option Pane. It actually popped up this input box, but behind the screen I'm looking at now. So I will simply, I uh, might need to do a little bit of F6 magic to find, or uh, Alt-Tab magic to find it, because sometimes it, up oh, there it is right there. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and say gallons of gas tin. Just be aware of that. Those pop-ups sometimes hide the very first time in NetBeats. So gallons of gas 10. Okay, now what we can see, along with my vehicle, we can see this temporary variable str gallons of gas. It has the value 10 in quotes, which indicates it's a string. Take a look at the next line where we're converting a string to a double. Do you see how dbl gallons of gas does not exist in this variables tab? Well, let's go ahead and choose uh, shift F8. And what we'll see is as soon as that line executes, now we can see the variable down here in the variables tab. Along with the value, there's no quote because it's not a string, it's a double. There is a decimal point and a zero, which indicates that it's a floating point value. So uh, it can contain some fractional information. Okay, now let's take a look. Where am I now? I'm on line 42. My vehicle dot set gallons of gas. That's a method call. We're calling the method set gallons of gas and we're passing to it dbl gallons of gas, which is a value of 10. What do we want to hit now, F7 or F8? I think we should hit F7, because I want to step into this method and see what's going to happen. 
Now, look at a few things before I choose F7. First of all, note that the driver tab is highlighted across the top. Secondly, note that the my vehicle variable, everything is initialized to zero. We're going to see that change in just a moment. So, F7. And now take a look at the tab that's highlighted, vehicle. So what we've done is we have stepped into the set gallons of gas method in vehicle. And what we can see if I mouse over the parameter is that we're passing in a 10. We're going to take that 10 and we're going to assign that 10 to the gallons of gas attribute of the vehicle class. And what we should see after that is that gallons of gas will change from 0 to 10. So let's go ahead and F8. And you see, sure enough, it's changed. Now I'm at the close curly, which closes off this method. So F8 again will take us back to where we left off in cars. Okay, miles per gallon, I'll say 25. And you know, here's one other thing that's really nice about the debugger. I have not passed this value 25 into the setter method for my vehicle. So I still have an opportunity to change it. I can come down here and I could make it maybe 10. Maybe we're running something not very efficient, or maybe I can make it 30. Let's make it 30. Uh, maybe we're running a, a small car that's very fuel efficient. So you see now, miles per gallon, I'm able to change the variables in my debug session, and I'm able to experiment with it and say, well, what if it were a 30? Okay? There's a lot of value in this, especially when you're working with a very large program. So we'll choose F8 again. We're going to convert that 30, which we've altered, uh, to a fraction, and we're going to set that value in my vehicle, okay? Enter odometer, again, we'll just stick with 10,000 for this, but, you know, again, if I wanted to change it, I could come down here, make it 11,000 maybe while the program's running, okay? And then we're going to go F8, F8, distance traveled, we'll say, uh, let's see, we'll say 300 miles, okay, and then F8, and then we print the state of the vehicle, and then we, and if, uh, I'll go ahead and F8, we will let the vehicle run the given distance, and then we will print the state of the vehicle again. Finally, a bit of F5 to tell it, okay, we're all finished. We'll go ahead and allow the program to just uh, basically wrap up at the computer's own pace. So we see here gallons of gas 10, odometer 11,000. Remember, I changed that in the debugger. Gallons of gas 0, uh, odometer 11,300, because I said 300 miles per gallon. Uh, I'm sorry, I said 300 miles to travel. And in the debugger, I changed the variable from a 20 to a 30 uh, so that I could uh, manipulate that a little bit and see a different outcome. So debugger, this is something that we're going to use quite a bit while we're programming is because programming sounds like we sit around a lot and just write apps all day long. But in reality, a lot of times we are uh, using something that somebody else wrote and we have to take a look at it and we have to figure out how it works. And a lot of times our best friends at that point is the debugger because we can watch through and walk it watch it work and see what it does. One other situation that happens frequently is that we work through a method and we go too far. So I want to see what's inside this go method. But I F, F, I F8 and you know what? I just passed it. Okay, if we're really deep in a debug session, we could start over, but that would take a lot of time. So another option we can do is we can say stack, and then we can say pop topmost call. And what that effectively does is it restarts the method and resets everything to its initial position uh, without us having to actually go through and debug everything all over again. So pop topmost call, Note that what that does is that takes me back to the point where we were calling this method. And then from there, I can F7N, and I can go ahead and F8, and I can restart the method again. So 10 gallons of gas, and I'll try and do this relatively quickly. Okay, uh, miles per gallon, we'll say 25, and F8. Odometer, 10,000, and F8. Distance to travel, we'll say 100 and F8, and you see now I have an opportunity to step into this Go method. And here's where the variables tab was really nice because you can watch these intermediate calculations as they occur. So gallons consumed, you see is four gallons. Why? Because distance is 100 and miles per gallon is 25. 100 divided by 25 is four. And then we say gallons of gas equals gallons of gas minus gallons consumed. 
So you see here, gallons of gas is 10, but then as I F8, you see it drops to six because we're saying gallons of gas equals 10, must, uh, 10 minus six. Now odometer, you see right now that says 10,000, but we should see after this line executes, we should see it say 10,100. And there we go. And then we can simply F5 and tell the program to continue. Now, I stress many times to people who are new to, new to programming, it's more important to be a good debugger than a good programmer. Because honestly, you are going to spend most of your time looking at something that somebody else wrote, not designing a new app from top down. Or you're going to spend a lot of time debugging something that unexpectedly has problems. If you go to this breakpoint, you right click and say breakpoint and then properties. This is one of the most valuable things that you can use. We don't know enough to use it just yet, but I will give you a hint on what's to come. If you click condition, you can say, uh, we could say something like foo equals true, and you can actually program the breakpoint to only stop under certain conditions. So a conditional breakpoint, only going to stop when a certain condition is true. When we talk about if tests, we'll cover that in more depth. When we talk about loops, we'll talk about this one. For a loop, we're iterating over something. We're doing the same processing multiple times. And we can break when only when the loop hits a certain count. In other words, only when the loop has executed a certain time. Uh, suspend threads. Lots of complex things you can do with the debugger. Don't worry about those yet. Uh, right now, only be concerned with F7, F8, and F5. The, so the step over, the step into, and the continue. And uh, it usually takes about three tries to get the hang of it, but don't give up. Because if you can master the debugger, it's a wonderful learning tool, and it will save you quite a bit of time this semester. Thank you.